Hey guys, this is definitely different <laughs> and it's funny because I am an early bird, like an early, early bird. And my pr most productive time of the day is in the morning. And I was reminded of that when I scheduled this 8.30 p.m. broadcast for this evening. So as we get started, I'm going to go ahead and drop you guys a money nugget that's going to help you to actually manifest the goals and dreams and desires that you have is to learn yourself. Know when you are at your most productive state and the things that are important to you that are money generating activities or that require you to be, well, not even just in the presence of other people, but to be doing stuff that's going to move your business forward. Be sure that you know yourself and know when your most productive times are. So for me, I can get up like three or four o'clock in the morning and I am full of wind. You know, I can just go. I get a lot done in the wee hours uh, or early morning hours. And those are my most productive times. Normally around one-ish, one thirty, I'm usually kind of winding down because I've been up, you know, every bit of what, eight hours or more. Um, at that time, let's see, four to four, yeah, at least eight hours um, at that time. And I was reminded of that this evening as I was preparing to come on. I'm like, it's taken so much for me to, you know, to come on for my broadcast. What in the world is it? And then I reminded myself that my most productive times are actually in the morning. So when you're wanting to grow your business and take it to new levels, you want to be mindful to understand exactly who you are. Work with yourself and not against yourself because that's kind of what I was doing. I was like, why is it taking so much out of me um, to get it together and come on? But normally around this time of the night, like I'm almost man's da man down, you know, at this point. What is your best hours of the day? As you come on, I see you guys joining Share with me, what are your most productive times of the day? Are you a morning person? Um, are you a night owl? I know um, one person in particular, she does her best work at night. She says she is a complete night owl at like when the clock strikes 12, she can just go. That's when she's her most creative, her most energetic. That's not me at all. And so um, I'm glad to be here though. I pushed through. I actually had some other things to do at our normal schedule bar time broadcast time. And for those of you, if this is your first time, my normally scheduled broadcast times are Mondays and Wednesdays at 11.30 a.m. on my Facebook page. For those of you watching on YouTube or Instagram or possibly my personal page from Facebook, my business page is facebook.com slash build with Tanya. You can definitely, um, when we're done here, you can go and like the page and it'll give you notifications of when I'm actually on. You guys see in the title, um, creating a business that funds your lifestyle and not run your lifestyle. Do you guys get that? Because so many entrepreneurs find themselves in a space where, um, one, we're already extremely creative. We're visionaries. We have tons of ideas. But sometimes that works against us because we start in this flow where we begin to create so many different things. And it leaves so much for us to manage and maintain that we have the spirit of excellence or um, it's just so overwhelming. We tire easily or we burn out and then absolutely nothing gets done. And so I wanted to talk about, you know, just something significant as it relates to really creating a business that you love, a business that funds your lifestyle and not runs your lifestyle. I'm trying to see if I can actually um, share share this out as we're talking. As you come in, if you're catching me on the replay, put hashtag replay. If you are a regular, put hashtag renew. Um, the name of my consulting business is Renew Full Circle. We get your whole life over here. I truly believe that your business and your life, they intertwine. So regardless of, you know, how much we want to separate that those two, at some point they intertwine. And I found that out uh, during my first few years as 
a service-based business owner. So I've been an entrepreneur, self-employed for close to 30 years, about 27 years. And I owned a brick and mortar service-based business for 10 years. And the first three years of owning the business, I opened the business, I got married and had a baby in a three-year time frame. Like all of that going on in a three-year time frame. And what I found was um, exhaustion, frustration, uh, confusion. And at the same time, I was also in a dysfunctional marriage. And so systems and strategies are my superpower. So I exude them. You know, if you share something with me, they just come to me easy. I can easily see a system or a way that you can put it in place and make it easier for you so that you can kind of automate it. Um, creating systems is my thing. But regardless of how well I was at creating systems, at that time in my life where my personal life was, you know, was trouble in paradise, it was rolling over into my business. And I found myself stuck. I began creating tools and strategies, productivity tools. One of them, I just kind of mentioned to you all, understanding who you are and knowing what your best times of the day are, the most productive times that you have of the day, and align those with the tasks that you need to get done uh, to work on your business, not in your business, but on your business. I'm, I'm all about uh, getting to the point where the bulk of your time is you working on the business and not in the business. Now, because I help many service-based business owners, many of you start out on the path where you're actually servicing a client hand-to-hand, -hand, whether you're a personal stylist, uh, whether you are a realtor, a photographer, a, a hairstylist, um, a makeup artist, massage therapist, uh, whether you're a coach or consultant, you're usually working with the client one-to-one. -one. So most of my clients, you know, that's normally how they begin the path. And unfortunately, many people in the service-based business industry end up that way as well. And over time, they find that what they originally started, they've outgrown. They're just uncertain about how to move to the next level. So one of the things I want to talk to you all about that I feel is really, really important, and I would love to see so many more service-based business owners creating passive income or creating income, recurring income that kind of allows them more time freedom. Um, it also allows them room to um, implement something that they've been wanting to implement in their business for quite some time, or it simply allows them more time freedom. So time freedom is one of my top five values. I, I tend to attract people who value time freedom um, as well. Financial freedom is one of my top five values too. But I, I tend to attract people who really value time freedom. They find themselves at a space in their business where they just want more time freedom. They want to be able to continue to create revenue and not always have to trade their time for dollars. If that's you, put me in the comments. If you want to earn more revenue, at minimum maintain your revenue and work less, put me in the comments. Most of the people who um, you know, come to me, they're looking for new ways to create more revenue. And I want to talk about the importance of having some type of passive income uh, or another revenue stream that doesn't necessarily require you to trade your time for dollars. I was uh, visiting my mom over the weekend and we had um, death in our family. And my grandmother passed when I was probably about four or five years old. Now, call it strange, but I remember my time with her like it was yesterday. Like she left a, an amazing impression on me. Everything that I remember about her uh, reminds me of love, you know, even to this day. And so uh, my grandmother, you know, passed fairly young. And because we had death in our family over the holiday, you know, we were in remembrance of my grandmother. My mother and I were. Now, the thing about my grandmother's uh, life, especially her childhood, is it was it was very unfortunate. She had a very unfortunate childhood. Back in 2001, I felt led to start researching my family tree for whatever reason. 
And the first steps I took, and I think, you know, it just crossed my mind. I think the Ancestor.com um, website may have become popular. I don't know if it just came out at that time or it may have become popular or whatever. But what, how I started, because I do remember having one of those accounts, but how I actually started, I began to call, you know, family members, older family members in the family. And in that, you know, asking questions, who's this, who's that, you know, can you connect me to this person? Is this person still living? And in the process, they would share, you know, different stories or even their perspective or opinions about other family members. And of course, you know, my grandmother comes up in the process because I'm asking questions like, what was my grandmother like? What do you remember about her? And there were things that were shared with me about her past that literally broke my heart right and it has spearheaded a lot of the decisions that I made in my life after that point it's also kind of like this centerpiece for why I have such a strong desire to work with women and I knew that I had that desire but I hadn't given myself permission before and so in me Stepping fully into who I am as a brand and understanding that my why, my story really impacted my drive and why it is I do what I do. Um, you know, I began to share more about the fact that I, I help women service-based business owners. I do have some men that come to me, but my focus, you know, is, is on women. So as I was sharing with you guys that my grandmother had like a really hard past. She was um, raped at 13, molested at 14. She had numerous children, um, unwedded, and she just really, really had a hard life. She saw so many aspects of poverty. And as I began to learn, and, and it's, you know, it was weird to me, like really hearing and embracing those things because I saw her as grandma. I just saw her as love and poverty didn't even register for me um, at the time that I was born, though my grandmother's life had begun to change. She actually changed who she was next to and her life began to change. She was exposed to um, different things and that alone impacted the generations to come. It impacted her children's lives, her children's children, which, you know, that's me and definitely my grand uh, child as well. But hearing about, you know, her life really impacted me. And so over the weekend, my mom shared a portion of some of the things she'd heard as it relates to my grandmother um, that were new to me. And it brought me back to when I began to, you know, study my my family tree and some of the decisions I made at that time, because I said, I'm going to change um, the trajectory of my family, which my mom and some of my aunts had already began doing that. But I just felt this uh, pull and call to really do things differently. And so there were some things that I, some positive things that I made a decision about in my life. And that was amazing. That uh, positive direction or that definite decisions that I made, you know, were, were good. They were great decisions. However, even though many of them, the decisions that I made were positive decisions, they all didn't turn out as planned. And one of the reasons that they didn't is because although it was a positive direction that I was heading, I didn't have full understanding. So I knew a lot about what I did want Y'all don't hear me. But I didn't get definitive about what I did not want. And many of you may have decided how you want your life to be, what type of home you want to have, you know, your your uh, dream income goal, you know, how many children, how you want your children to go to school. You, you probably have thought of many of those things, um, you know, some of the measures of time freedom that you want to have, um, the quality of life that you want to have, but where I feel we most, most of us miss out is we never sit down and say what we don't want. And if we do let that idea brush across the surface of our mind about what we don't want, we don't make it definitive enough. Meaning 
we may say, I'll take this, whatever this thing is, because it has what I want. Although the thing, whether it's a relationship, a job, a business, you know, an item, whatever, even if that thing has the things that you don't want, you overlook those things that you don't want because they withhold some of the things that you really do want. And so one of the big changes for me was not only deciding what I wanted for my life, but what I didn't want and making those things priority. <clears throat> I'll give you guys a, a simple example. You, you guys are entrepreneurs, you know, who follow me. Your business. Many of you, when you opened your business or you had the thought of opening your business, you thought about what you wanted in your business, but you didn't define what it is that you did not want. So that may mean that you now find yourself working extremely long hours or overwhelmed in an area that you used to be extremely passionate about. Um, because you did not define what you did not want. There was a space in my business where I knew I no longer wanted to have to trade my time for dollars all the time. I did not want that to be the only way that I earned revenue. And 2019 has definitely um, affirmed the direction that I want to head. I have more time freedom now than I've ever you know, experienced. Uh, but your business model and the way that you earn your revenue makes a huge difference in the quality of the business that you're building. I feel that many business owners stay so small. And what I mean by small, I mean in the role that they play and they operate in in their business that eventually they don't even like the thing that they used to love anymore. Uh, eventually when staying small is the case, they're overwhelmed because if they're not there, if they're not um, doing the actual service, the business isn't making revenue. And so I want to share with you the importance of creating some measure form of passive income, recurring income. Um, I created a product that I have a goal for that product alone that I don't have to touch again. It is completely automated. That is going to do what I desire, which is impact people tremendously. Um, I have a goal for that income, for that product to produce entry level income that would be equivalent to at least a, a teacher in, in the state of North Carolina. So that is my 2020 goal for that one product. Because I recognize that if that thing is producing that amount of revenue for me that I don't have to touch. It's an affirmation guide. So um, it, it's powerful. It's, it's simple, short, powerful, impactful. But I put a lot, of, um, a lot of energy and a lot of valuable information in it. And I set a goal for that particular item. And the goal that I set would have me, you know... Um, have people purchasing a certain number of them each month, each week, each day. And it would be the equivalent of the very entry level salary um, of, of a teacher in, in North Carolina. That allows me so much flexibility in the other things that I'm coaching, um, things that I want to do, events, things of that nature. It allows me that flexibility. I have books that should have been written forever and ever ago. But one in particular... I was waiting on a particular season in my life to occur so that I could complete it. But, you know, there are things that I want to work on within my business and the, com the comfort of having additional revenue streams makes a huge difference. One of the things I do um, in my mastermind, one of the first things we do is create another stream of revenue for them. We create something that's going to uh, eventually generate them passive, another stream of passive income um, so that they can work on the other aspects of building their brand and their business. And so I wanted to share with you tonight the importance of not only knowing what it is that you do want in your business, but what you don't want. If you no longer want to trade your, all of your time for dollars, my biggest suggestion is that you figure out 
another uh, revenue, or you come to me and allow me to help you build it. Um, <clears throat> but another revenue stream for your business that doesn't require you to trade all of your time for dollars. It's going to free you up. It's going to give you freedom to really build your business. A previous, I, it just reminded me of a previous broadcast I did where I talked about, um, are you spending all of your time earning money or growing the business? And if you create a revenue stream that pretty much flows on its own, that you don't have to be so hands-on with, you can spend time growing the business, right? And so I just thought of one of my clients who created a revenue stream and she's ready to really take her business to the next level. And that revenue stream gave her a cushion that would be needed if she needed to like slow down um, in the process of what she was doing as a hand-to-hand -hand service based business model. So I want you to take some time and um, many of you know what you want. You know what you want. Um, you may not have been bold enough to, to say it because it seems so, um, so big, <clears throat> but I believe that the highest version of you is never really confused, N never really confused. You know what feels great to you, you know what doesn't, you know what you like, you know what you don't like. You may not have enough faith or belief for it to manifest, for you to actually say and affirm that that is what you desire, but the highest version of you is never confused. It always knows what you really want and it always chooses the best for any given situation that you're in. But although you know what you want, have you taken time, have you ever sat down and taken the time to say, this is what I don't want. This is what is not going to go down for me and making that definitive. Because remember I shared with you all earlier that after um, researching my family tree and just hearing some of the hardship and things that my ancestors and people before me had gone through and recognizing how it was still not at the same measure, right? Because our families grow and improve, but, you know, as an individual, do you ever think, how can I impact my legacy? How can I change my legacy? People have definitely gone and done amazing things and they've changed the legacy more than I could even be grateful for, right? People before me, my mom, my, my father, they've changed the legacy in, in so many ways. Uh, but how can I impact the leg legacy even on a greater level? And in that, I realized that although the choices, is that blessed hands? Although the choices that I was making, hey dear, were amazing choices, what I did not do is make it definitive of what I did not want. So I want you to take some time, this is your assignment, uh, this evening and write down what you do not want. What is no longer acceptable for you? Because we can, it's just like this. You can say, I want a business. I want to start a business. And you start a business, you get the business. It is what you want it, but you never really made it definitive of what you didn't want. It. And so what happens is you begin to attract things that don't align with what you truly desire. I want you to give yourself permission to make some definite decisions about what you don't want. Now, let, let me be clear. Some of the things that you find that you don't want will be progressively removed from your life or your business. Not everything happens instantaneously, but there are some things that you say just, I don't, I'm not doing that anymore, right? But remember, some things are progressively removed for, for, from your business. At the end of every year around this month, I'm usually heavily into prayer and asking God, about the direction that I need to head for um, the next year. And I've been doing this, man, I was, I, I had my brick and mortar business when I first remember doing this. So this was probably 2005, maybe, um, that I've been doing this. And it, it would start with feeling like God was leading me with like one word to really focus on for the year. And so this year, what I've been uh, what I feel led, what has continuously come up for me was release and receive, release and receive. And then I'm going to throw renew on the end of that. So I believe that 2020 will consist of a lot of releasing things, whether it's releasing um, amazing, prosperous affirmations out into the atmosphere about where you desire your life to go or releasing things that no longer serve who you are now 
or who you are becoming so that you have room to receive. Many of you have so many things, so many situations, uh, so many thoughts that they are clouding up the space that you actually need in order to receive what's necessary for your next level. I believe that the decade of 2020 is, is hugely going to be about releasing things and receiving things. Not only releasing as in letting go, but releasing, putting out to, into the atmosphere, atmosphere, speaking um, from a bigger space, speaking from a space of worthiness, speaking from a space of certainty and faith about the things that you desire to manifest in your life, but also releasing things that won't allow you room to receive the things that are necessary for your next level. So your assignment for this evening is in all of the things that you said you do desire, write down what it is that you just know that you do not want. So maybe you want to uh, change your business model in your business, but in you writing down your goals and things that you desired for 2020, you did not write down what you didn't want. So that new thing ended up looking like you being even more overwhelmed than you were before, right? But if you decide, like for me, I knew time freedom was huge for me, huge desire for time freedom and financial freedom in my life. So everything that I'm building, I at least have to see that the vision for it, the long-term vision for that thing that I'm creating is going to allow me time and financial freedom. It's going to operate with my faith. It's going to align with, you know, my family. It's going to be something that I'm proud my, to have my daughter hear me talking about or seeing. Those things are really important to me. And so when I'm 20, 20 AG1, for those of you who need to release uh, bigger things out into the atmosphere, you need to get in alignment with what you truly desire. Be sure to go to bit.ly slash 2020 AG1. The guide is 21 bucks. It's probably the best 21 bucks you could actually spend. It helps you to change your what you're saying and get into alignment with the things that you desire. It's broken down into the six elements. I call them six elements of life alignment so that whatever the area is that you're wanting to um, improve or change or grow in your life, you can look specifically in that area and find words and affirmations that you can say to affirm them. And then it gives you directions for how to do them. But release and receive. Your homework assignment, again, <laughs> is to write down what it is that you don't want. And whatever it is that you're building, what are the no's to what you're building? Two of the biggest uh, and best words a leader can learn to say are yes and no. You guys have a super, super amazing evening.